listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocus Radio. We are here once again today. We have another amazing show lined up for y'all. We have our special guest today, Dr. David Pierce. He is a surgical slash restorative dentist for over 38 years. Since 2021, he has let go of that practice. He sold it, but he is now focusing his coaching practice for dentists and helping them just thrive in their industry. He has a website you can uh, go look at and check out. It's ultimatesuccess.dentist. And first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your super busy schedule. Dr. David, how are you doing? Hey, I'm well, Shemaya. Thank you. appreciate your time as well. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yes, sir. Appreciate your time. So I kind of gave a little short teaser opening, but kind of tell us a little bit about your practice doing surgical slash uh, restorative uh, dentist work. Yeah, sure. Well, so maybe I'd say long story short is I, as a person, I've always, uh, I figured out that I enjoy learning. I enjoy the process of learning, you know, lifelong learner and just the, even the process of, so general dentist, but there's so many way more opportunities now to learn beyond what you were taught in school. Um, less when I came out, you know, close to four decades ago, but there's still opportunities then. And so as I, started meeting dentists that were doing way more complicated work than I was. I made, uh, made, made it, I pivoted in that direction saying that, well, this looks good. I can just go learn how to do this, take these courses, learn that one. And then two, I felt like the key to success would be master, you know, master the craft. And then I'd be set. Everybody would want me to take care of them. Um, so, uh, yeah, so went through. And so mastering a craft is, you know, from a general dentist, you can, the beauty of dentistry is you can take courses to, to elevate your skill to standard of care in you know, many different directions. Really, it's, it's wonderful that way. You can reinvent yourself as many times as you want to, really. Um, and so I had a, maybe halfway or so, two thirds of the way through my dental clinical career, I made a decision that I, that I really wanted to get involved in much more complicated reconstructed surgical reconstruction of folks because that group of people truly had dental disabilities. You know, they, if, if, it, if it was a smile issue, you know, they're covering their mouths, they're looking away, they wouldn't go in public the way they wanted to. They wouldn't date. They wouldn't ask somebody to, you know, do something socially. Uh, if it was an eating issue, they'd started, you know, avoiding uh, situations where they knew they wouldn't be able to chew the food or, uh, and then some of it was just plain fear of dentistry, uh, so we introduced you know IV sedation, so folks can say, so you can put me to sleep and do this work, and I wake up and I have no memory of that, and it's like, yep, we can do that. So combination of any one of those three disabilities was really just so uh, so rewarding because you just you know our, our mantra is changing people's lives one smile at a time, and that really is what it became uh, for probably the last decade plus of my career, as opposed to you know, not your story, maybe Shemaya, but there's a lot of people that don't want to go to the dentist. Uh, and certainly all these people were the same, but I think part of that is like, I, you know, different subject. But for me, it's like, I don't really want to get the roof replaced on my house. Like, you know, you have to do it, you pay the money, but it's not like a big, yeah, baby, this is awesome. <laughs> and a lot of the dentistry that we do is kind of that same way. Yeah. I had a root canal. Yeah. I got a crown on a back tooth, you know, that, um, and if it's a pain things like, okay, they got rid of my pain, but you know, you know, honestly, I think a lot of that's like, okay, I took the, I took the splinter out of my finger and, you know, an hour later, like, okay, it's gone. I'm on with life. Whereas when you, when you make it so that somebody, you know, sends you a letter and says, you know, Dr. David just wanted you to know, I've been tracking my high school sweetheart for the last 10, 20 years. Uh, she was divorced. I was divorced. I didn't have any courage to meet her again because of my smile. Thank you for changing my smile. Just wanted you to know we got married two months ago. Um, and you get, you know, those kind of stories who just totally change somebody's life just through dentistry. It's just amazingly rewarding. So, uh, so yeah, that was the practice. And then, you know, at some point I looked at it and said, you know, that I wanted to do a couple of different things, you know, that my wife and I wanted to be a little bit more free of our, uh, of the business, if you will. So, cause the beauty of dentistry is all the stuff I just told you, uh, the downside of any brick and mortar business 
especially if you're my word, if you're it, like if you're one of the main providers, uh, you got to be there. You know, and when you're not there, not only are you not providing, but that thing says, feed me, feed me, feed me in, in the form of overhead. Um, so uh, I had a very strong interest in helping other dentists learn to do the uh, on the business side of what we were doing, um, just because I met so many dentists along the way who were way more talented than I ever would hope to be, both in just intellect as well as just plain clinical skills. And yet when I would, you know, talk to them just casually about whatever, you know, I'd be like, well, you're doing this kind of dentistry all day long, right? And they'd be like, yeah, no, uh, no, I do like one or two times a year. And then there'd be a list of because, 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 because. Uh, and to me, I thought, it's what a shame, you know, that all of those becauses were related to either the individual's mindset or the business systems, uh, the sales systems, you know, the team that they had uh, or the employees that weren't a team, as the case usually was uh, or is. Um, so anyway, so that so that was yeah, that was a, it was a very easy transition for me to say, I'm just not going to do clinical anymore, but I'm going to live vicariously through the dentists that I help. It, so they can help more people do truly amazing dentistry. And then, uh, and I have had a piece of that, so to speak. So it, it feels good. So that's my story. Jemaya, sticking to it. <laughs> Been talking to our guest today, Dr. David Pierce. And let's kind of dive into that part because in your, I always say in your last 12 years of your career, your practice has transformed. It, it, the revenue shot up and you had the same team of six. So for the audience and the professionals out there, walk us through the processes that you were taking to transform the way you operated your business. Yeah. So, so like during that last third or last 10, 12 years, sure. Yeah. And of course, you know, to me, it, it, uh, Shema, you know, it's kind of like that old thing that, uh, you know, you watch an Olympian do something amazing and you say, like, oh, that's great. That doesn't look that hard. And, you know, of course, what they tell you is like, you didn't see the, you know, the 10, 20,000 hours of practice and, and no, that doesn't work in practice and that's better in practice and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, you, all you see is the, the end result. So, so we started seeing a huge you know, uptick in that, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago. But prior to that, what you didn't see going on was, you know, David Pierce becoming a better version of himself, really, you know, just, uh, and not just, not uh, of the ways I became a better version of myself, the least important, uh, albeit a piece of the puzzle was the clinical, you know, uh, skill set. Uh, the biggest part was the mental, you know, the mindset, like, you know, so am I, like, why would somebody trust me? Why would they come to me? Do I have the ability to do this? Uh, all, all those, you know, those doubts and fears that you put in yourself. And um, so that was certainly one growing in myself that way, growing in myself from a leader standpoint, uh, which was a huge struggle, no question for sure. Uh, still not there, but, you know, infinitely better and really thankful for the people that wrote books and the people that had faith in me and uh, along the way um, and just plain, you know, God's God's willingness to be patient with me as I as I as I made my made my transition, if you will, or gradual journey. Um, and then so you know, so once I got better as a leader, you know, to help a team who, you know, I think in our society today, Shemaya, I'd be curious how you feel about it. But I think there's a huge shortage of leadership in every sector of the world. Uh, you know, starting at home as parents, and then from there into the schools and the political and the churches and everywhere else, um, it just seems to be lacking as I would define leadership. And so, uh, you know, having a team that are leaders in and of themselves, you know, a lot of them had never been in any situation where, where it was even safe to, you know, be a leader or safe to make decisions, you know, just tell me what to do and I'll do it was, is kind of the mentality. I think we all kind of get along the way cause that's the safe way. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so making myself change, you know, helping the team become better leaders. And then of course, the better we became leaders, uh, the more the patients, um, you know, they don't, they don't want to be led, but they do want to be led from the standpoint of, you know, what can you do to help me? How does that fit my, as a patient, my agenda for my life? And uh, can I trust you people uh, with something that's very intimate to me, which is my smile, my mouth, you know, so forth. And, and a big part of my life, you know, especially as a disability. So, so yeah, that was, that's, that's, that made a lot of things in there, but to me, it's like, you know, fix, fix the way I thought and saw myself and saw what I could become. And, and then how could I help a team and develop that same uh, uh, ability to see themselves as, as part of something which is way bigger than themselves and, and their significant part in that. 
because for sure there's, you know, there's no way Michael Jordan can do it. He's amazing. Tom Brady, you can pick all these, you know, stars that are, they're amazing in and of themselves, but you know, Michael would be nowhere without the other four on the court and, and Brady without the other 10 on the, on the field. So same way with me, I'd be dead in the water without a team that's just amazing around me. Um, so that transformation as well. When you talk about the, the team of six that you had and how their responsibility changed from just kind of like, what do I need to get done and turn it into, okay, how can I be a leader? How did yeah. you create that culture in your office that empowered people to say, you know what, I can do more than just show up. I can actually do some things that enables the whole organization to thrive. Yeah. Well, that's like the hundred million dollar question, right? Um, you know, and of course, you know, the beauty of a show like yours is that you're going to, you're, 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 you're kind enough to let, you know, David Pierce come on and share his story, which is a way of getting there and only a way. Um, so uh, I, I, I'll share what I share what I know is helpful. And, but then for somebody else, it might be a totally different way that gets even better results. Um, you know, but so I guess part of it was maybe retra retracing what was helpful for me along the way. A lot of that was books. You know, we started, go we, I always felt like, I always knew I was a learner. I was always reading books and self-help books, you know, quote unquote, self-help books. Um, and I, I enjoyed reading them. They just, you know, they felt like they empowered me. And so I started, or just, how, how would you call it? Uh, Shemaya, maybe f uh, forced progress or forced learning. You know, we just said, okay, we're going to set aside four hours every single month just for learning. Whole team, no patients, you know, start coming at eight, get done at, at noon, you had an agenda, but oftentimes, virtually always, we were, they were reading something. We were reading something together, a book uh, of some sort, None, never clinical, never professional, always just about how can how can they become a better version of themselves is you know, really kind of what we settled on. And and to me, the, you know, the, the concept wasn't that they would become a better dental professional part. You know, as I would always say to them, as I totally believe for myself, was that you know, when David became a better form of David, he became a better spouse, a better father, a better Christian, a better patriot, better, 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 better. And one of those things was he became a better dentist and a better leader and a better business owner. But of all the things in my life, that was the one I knew for sure would go away. You know, someday I would, wouldn't be a, the leader or the owner of that business. And someday I might not even be a dentist. You know, I might give up my dental degree or not the degree, but the, 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 uh, license, if you will, um, and, you know, do something different in my life. And so, uh, so, I, and, and I, and pressing that on, and we started looking at things, I think that what really made the big turn, Grand State Shemaya, was when we started looking at some of those things and, you know, or how do you have hard, hard conversations with people in your life? So that might be a patient that says, yeah, I mean, they're not saying this, but they're saying, no, no, I, as a patient, am not worth spending that much time and money on me. I would easily spend it on my daughter. I'd spend it on my spouse. I'd spend it on a lot of other people, but I won't spend it on me because I'm not worth it. They don't say that, but that's many times what the thing is. So you as a, as a team member, like, so we started going through those conversations and, and you know, that they might say, like, how come I don't have a good relationship with this, this parent of mine or with my child, or I'd like this to become better. And there'd be answers in those books and, and they would try them and then they'd come back and say, like, you know, that worked. Like I tried that. It was better. It's like, there you go. Like, see, you're becoming a better mom. You're becoming a better parent, a better child to your parents, uh, whatever that looks like. Uh, and I think that that was kind of, you know, someone became believers and then other people would look at it and say, well, if my other, you know, uh, uh, team member got that kind of success by applying that, maybe they gave them hope, but maybe because, you know, we all have relationships we w wish were better. Uh, and some just just lots of relationships there they wish were better. Um, so I think that's really most when most of the attraction came from I was you know just making a learning environment, being open to failure with each other, being vulnerable with each other. Like these are things I tried didn't work. This is where I, I mean I got stupid the other day and I said this to my wife. Maybe my story is like man all the stuff I tell you guys I got stupid with, with my wife. I said this the other day and like when it came out of my mouth it's like what an idiot you are. Why did you say that? Um, but then you know learning skills to say hey you know. I didn't, you know, I said that, but I don't mean that. And I'm so sorry I hurt you. And I want to go back to that. I want to revisit that conversation. Just those kind of learning things, I think, that once the team picked that up, 
their lives got better and they just became believers in that whole thing. Uh, such that when I sold the, uh, you know, the business, uh, you know, several of the employees have been there for, you know, well over a decade, you know, they, uh, and they, you know, either they had retired and reached out or they're still there. And they said, yeah, you know, the, the, the single greatest thing that I got from working with you, Dr. Pierce was, uh, one, one woman just wrote me recently, uh, and uh, she said, was that I learned that life begins outside your comfort zone. So I thought, how about that? Like, that's pretty cool for a team that says, like, of all the things you learned, that's one thing. And somebody else, you know, said, you know, I just want to thank you because I wouldn't have the relationship I have with my father and with my older sister if it weren't for all the, with the opportunity, not what you did, Dr. Pierce, but the opportunity that you created in the office for me to change and to me to learn more about what it takes to, to be a, a better daughter or a stronger daughter or a, a better sister or a stronger sister. So yeah. So I think it's learning, learning and, about themselves. And speaking of coming outside your comfort zone, uh, when it comes to the times that things can get kind of bumpy on the road, you know, accountability is also the other side of comfort. And for you to be stretched, sometimes you had to, like you said, get out of your comfort zone and be able to be accountable when you're needed to be. So how did you kind of show that to your team to understand, like, it ain't going to be just sunshine and rainbows. We have to be able to react when things don't go as well as planned. Mm, yeah. So account- So your question is, is like, so how did, how did we make sure that accountability was always uh, was was always present in yeah. the growth process. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, th- I you know I think that one of the things that I uh, it's funny we we uh, we had we're in a new community here uh, where we live in right now, and so we met some uh, some neighbors, if you will, and they were over to dinner the other night. And Susan was we were there talking about families, and and you know, and so Susan, my wife. And she said, oh, oh, David uh, grew up in, a, in the Richie Cunningham family. So if, you, if you're enough of a, of a TV buff back, you know, 40, 40, 50 years ago, you know, the Richie Cunningham family, you know, like they were just like this, like this totally functional, everybody loves everybody, everybody gets along in the family under the same roof. You know, I mean, that doesn't mean they don't have disagreements, but they always get along, they always love each other, it's very apparent. And uh, so one of the things I impressed upon, having grown up that way, which is true, I was very fortunate, I had great parents, they were very, they were firm loving support. They're, you know, wonderful leaders in many ways to me and to the community. And so uh, my sister as well. And so one of the things I impressed upon the team was that outside of my family, I don't think I was ever on any functional team. Like every, the church groups I was in, uh, sports teams I was on, like anywhere I looked is like there's dysfunction everywhere, you know, like, uh, you know and, and from what I felt what functional should look like. Back when I was growing up, that those words didn't exist around it. It was just like, yeah, you know, whatever, you know, that like, like in sports, what I found was in sports that if you're a really good player, you're gonna you're gonna start on um, you know the first game, beginning of the beginning of the game, you're gonna start, you know, you don't show up to practice because you're the good player. So I was like, how does that work? Like this this kid doesn't even come out to practice, he has a bad attitude, but he has these all these gifts and he starts and this other person that's working their dog off tail off like a dog trying to be trying to be good has to sit on the bench the whole time like what's what's with that as an example so anyway um so i think that you know that as we went through those things you know i said to everybody so here's the deal from us as a team is that none of you have ever been on a functional team i bet you haven't so how would you know what it's like to be a functional teammate if you've never been on a functional team so you know we're going to have a high rpm my way high rpm from a customer service standpoint not speed of seeing people for sure but we're having a very, very high level of clinical of care and a very, very high level of customer service care. And when you're going that fast and trying to be that, that precise, you're going to get on each other. And how you act when you get on each other is, is there are certain ways that are appropriate and a lot of ways that aren't. And so we talk a little bit about, you know, the different styles of how people handle conflict as far as, you know, freeze and, and appease and uh, please. And how's it go? Freeze, please. Sorry. You'll help me with it. Um, but anyway, you know, you know your fight or flight, freezer piece. That's what I think those four, you know, that's how we handle stress. And so you all have your default way of doing it, but but none of those are very good. 
And so uh, we're going to have to look at that as a team. And when that happens, we have to bring it up and we, and I will bring it up. And I know that every time we do, it's going to be no fun, very uncomfortable. But once we work our way through it, just like in the, uh, I'll say a, a beneficial therapy session, if you will, you should be able to go through the, the, the crap and come out the other side being stronger and closer to the people you, you just went through the crap with. Um, so there was that. And then, of course, on the clinical side, you know, we, we just did it like any corporate office would do. You know, you had an organizational chart and just said, OK, so here's the different positions. Here's the people that have said they want to be in the positions. Here's the jobs task in that position. And ultimately, you are responsible for the outcome of that. Uh, and and it's easy to see. Like, there it is. It's your job. And so once a week, we would meet and we just look at those things and say, Okay, what's going on? How do we make it better? Who's in charge? Okay, what happened? Was it a bad system? Okay, let's fix the system. Was it you? Okay, you're human. Just how do we make sure it doesn't happen again? So we always get better. Tomorrow's a better day. So those are probably the two biggest ones. Certainly of the harder ones, I think that when somebody doesn't do a task, well, it feels bad to get called out on that. Um, when they treat somebody, a human, another human, poorly, and therefore they hurt that person in one way or another, that I think is really tough for people to you know, to put their, wrap their head around that and say, you know, it's not okay, but it happens. And, and here's a, here's a, here's how we, here's one place in my life where it's safe to have that stuff dragged out into the public and you're not going to be skewered by it. You know, it's not going to be held against you and you can work your way through it with the other people and you'll get better on the other side. Once again, talk to our guest today, Dr. David Pierce, you go to his website, ultimate success dentist. So, Today, you're coaching other owners who have their own practice and their own team. What's some of the patterns? I mean, everyone's situation is different, but what's, what's some common threads that you're seeing with your clients as you're um, learning about their current state and how you're helping them navigate to reach their, their new goals? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I would, you know, oh, certainly if I was going to oversimplify it, Shemaya, I would definitely say that, uh, that, that most dental businesses, uh, start off, uh, they, they either, well, they either start off scratch or they start off not so much today, or they start off relatively some, you know, a, a, a young dentist, if you will, purchasing a business that with their skill set they should be able to run it and therefore or there aren't a lot of moving pieces to it, not a lot of employees. And so they come into dentistry with a, a good foundation of clinical, how do I fix teeth and smiles and gums and all that stuff coming out of dental school or dental school and residency. And, but in that education, there's no attempt to teach them anything that has to do with business and any, or any part of business, you know, the, the concept of business, the systems in business, the marketing in business, how do you handle money in business? How do you hire? How do you fire? All of, none of that. There's none of, none of that to training at all. And so unless they just happen to be intuitively good at it, which some are and most aren't, then they then they just work hard. It's like, I can do it. And they put their nose to the and they, and they work hard. And then at some point they just hit, hit a wall where it's like, you don't have the you don't have the ability in you to do this because you just don't you're not thinking right. So that's more mindset around leadership, mindset of what does this whole thing look like? Systems wise, organization, like, you know, how do I put that whole thing together? Um, and I think that those are probably the two biggest things, you know, if I looked at it, one is is leadership as a form of mindset. Like what is it, what does a good leader look like? And how do I become that? Uh and, and of course, wrapped into that is their own personal mindset about themselves. You know, and, and do I deserve to be somebody that a team will follow and patients will follow? Um, and it sounds like, you know, if, if you, Shamaya, or any of your listeners don't struggle with that mindset, it's another way you just, just do it like you just are. But for those of you who do struggle with that, you can maybe appreciate like that. That can be super hard to, you know, how do I change myself to that person that believes in myself to that level? or gradually believes in myself. Um, so, um, you know, I think that those those are definitely the two. It's just the logistics of it, managing the money part, managing the systems. And then the other is is the leadership component when it comes to leading myself. But then how do I lead a team effectively? Uh, I, and I say lead a team more from being a leader as opposed to being a manager or micromanager, which is the usual, if anything, way that that happens. 
uh, partly because the dentist owner has no clue about leadership and what that looks like. And, you know, I, th- this may be unfair to say it, but I think an awful lot of people in, uh, in maybe a small business in general, where I mean, three quarters of the workforce <clears throat> doesn't need a degree to have that. Not, not that there's nothing special about a degree, but a degree gives you some opportunity to learn some things other than beyond high school. So they don't have, so they don't, they don't know what it's like to be a leader themselves. And so they're happy to just tell me what to do, uh, which, you know, which burns out really fast. Last question. Once again, talking to our guest, Dr. David Pierce on, on Refocus Radio. When you learn about all these other practices in your teams, you don't always talk about the employee perspective, but what's some of the good principles that an employee can learn to build on in order to make the ones who are calling shots make their life a little bit easier? What's, what's some of the ways employees can add value to where they work at? Uh, so, so for an employee to add, add value from the standpoint of, uh, and the outcome would be, uh, what, what outcome would you look at to my, on, on the value added part? Just so I can make sure I answer your question well. Okay. So basically like making sure the operations and basically the employer who's trying to secure their job, obviously, but also trying to build something great that impacts the community. How can the employee keep in perspective that it's not just a paycheck, but it's also they're contributing to something bigger than themselves? Sure. Uh well, you know, I think that, that maybe there's two ways. One, to, so, so I guess part of it would be, uh, Shemaya, probably it, it might depend a little bit on the culture of the particular business that they're in. So, like, for instance, if, you, if, if an employee found themselves in a culture where personal progress um, and, and, and a very, very known, uh, my word, noble purpose for the business exists, or, or they know, you know, for instance, ours is, you know, changing people's lives one smile at a time, like everything we looked at and say, like, so, so whatever we just did, whatever that looks like, were, were we as a team at our best when that happened? And if we were, oh, good. But chances are we weren't. And everybody always said, no, that's not our best. Okay, good. So, so let's, let's look at that. Let's fix it so it doesn't happen again. So if you're in that kind of environment where you're encouraged to grow, then I would just read books on your own. I mean, you read books on your own, get information, come back. You can share it with a teammate. You're just going to start standing out among patients and among people in that business of being somebody who's just giving more. And it'll it'll feel good to you to give more, which is nice. But the teammates, the owner... And more importantly, the people you're serving, you know, in our cases, patients or clients or whatever you want to call them, the people that are coming to your business, customers, um, you know, they'll sense that they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll feel it. They'll just know it. They'll feel like that's the place I want to go. That's where I want to spend my money. That's where I want to spend my time is in that business. Um, and then if you're not in that kind of a business, I think that, you know, the, the, the recipe would be the same, you know, which is make yourself a better form of you. And my feeling is, you know, you throw a better form of you out into the universe, the universe will respond and you'll find yourself, you know, opportunities you know, will just happen. You'll hear something, you'll see something, somebody will notice you and you'll be invited into a business that shares that same feeling that like we want people like you that truly want to make a difference in this world, truly want to make a difference in this business. And you, and you are that person because I watched the way you you act like I used to, you know, we used to, anytime I went out to a restaurant I would, or any place, particularly a restaurant, because people, you have multiple times to see somebody um, or a bank teller, you can go to the same bank and, you know, rather than doing drive up banking, I would start, uh, I would go to the tellers on purpose. And they didn't know, but I was like looking for somebody that just had that exceptional, like, I'm just here to do a great job and I'm always going to do my very best all the time. And customers needs are right there. Uh, and serve her the same way in a restaurant. You know, they, those people, they're not very many that just have that, but they just stand out, like just like a sore thumb in a really great way. So that would be my advice. Been listening on Refocus Radio, talking to our guest today, Dr. David Pierce. You can check out what he's doing with his coaching for dentists and practice and their dream team. Go to ultimatesuccess.dentist and 
real quick, someone who's listening, they have a practice. What's the best way that they can connect with you if they are a good fit? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm really easy to find. Uh, so that's not hard. Like, yeah, as you mentioned, the you know, website, uh, uh, and there's actually two ways. It's an odd web- website, but, you know, it works for us, which is ultimate success dot dentist. So there's no common there, but there's another link we have, which is called 4m40.com. So if you like 4m40.com, you can spell it right in here. You want to, it'll send you all the same place. Um, there's a number of different ways to get in touch with me. There's other information as giveaways and so forth from freebies of things that are really actionable stuff you could put to work, uh, you know, Tuesday morning if you wanted to. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm always happy to chat with people, you know, that uh, I've been really blessed to have a, a number of, never really a coach type person in my life, but a lot of really good people who are doing great things, mentors either at a distance or, or nearby. Um, and so anything I can do to help somebody else uh, with a, a little bit here, a little bit there, whatever, uh, happy to help out. Once again, I want to say thank you to our guest today, Dr. David Pierce, for your time. Yeah, Shmaya, thank you. Appreciate the, all the effort you put into running this podcast. I, uh, I know how easy it is to be a guest versus to be a host. So uh, kudos to you, my friend, for, for taking the initiative and making it run. It's great. Appreciate it. Man.